The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhaus. Today we have with us Autumn Barnes. Autumn, how's it going? Hey, pretty good, thanks. So can you tell me a bit about what you do for the Canola Council of Canada? Sure, I'm an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada in the Southwest Prairies. And basically my job is to work between um, growers, the industry and the research community. Um, So uh, figuring out where our needs are for innovation, communicating that with the research community and then bringing all those new innovations and new, new research knowledge back to the growers and to the industry that need them. And can you tell us a bit about what we're doing today in this field? Sure, yeah. We're going to talk about canola stand establishment. Um, I'm the Canola Council stand establishment lead, so this is kind of my wheelhouse. And uh, we're going to carry on with a discussion that we had earlier this spring uh, talking about uh, stand establishment and uh, an optimum canola plant density. So we're going to take a little walk through this field. Um, throw our lovely plant hoop around a couple times and um, and get a good understanding of what this canola field uh, looks like, if there's anything we need to be worried about uh, and, and things that we're potentially happy about as well. So when farmers are actually looking at that crop emerging, what should they be looking for? Yeah, so really we want to be looking for, um, so the ideal stand is, uh, is five to eight uh, uniform plants per square foot. One thing that's really kind of tricky when you walk a field, or for me personally, when I walk a field without a hoop, I find I get drawn to really bad spots. Um, and so for things, especially like assessing a flea beetle, um, in like a, a flea beetle damage scale, um, if we only look to the areas that are really bad, we don't really get a good representation of what the whole field looks like. So what I'll be doing is walking around, and usually I try and do... I don't know, 20 to 50 steps um, between tosses. Um, and the hula hoop I really like because you toss it and it kind of like um, falls wherever it falls. So you also can't be drawn to a specific area. Like if you have a really a really nice couple rows or or maybe a really patchy or, or poor looking area. So, so we'll do that. We'll um, toss the hoop and then get down and take a look and count the plants that are inside of the hoop. So my hoop is a quarter meter squared. So... Um, I um, multiply that by four and divide by 10, and that's what I get for plants per square foot. Um, and so we'll do that when we walk through the field, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make note. Uh, if you're a, an agronomist, you'll generally have some sort of software that you would use, or even just in your notebook, make some notes of what you're getting for plant counts, and then you'll average that out. And so we've come into sort of the middle of the field here. Um, and so we'll be doing some plant counts around here. And then if we were scouting this field for real, we'd also um, go to a few different spots within that field. Uh, especially when we're, when we're seeing a problem, it's important to get an idea of how big, of how large scale that problem is. And when we're scouting for things like flea beetle, we want to make sure that um, we're getting a good representation of the whole field because often we'll have pro- like edge effects, problems where, for example, the beetles are coming in from the headlands um, or coming in from any any ditches or areas where they've overwintered. So we'll want to make sure that we get out and get a good representation and we'll make a note of that. And, and then what we would do is plug those numbers back into the canola calculator, um, into the emergence tool and figure out what our plant emergence is. So what percentage of the seeds that we planted turned into successful plants. And generally we want to wait until about a two to four leaf stage before we use that concrete number as our emergence for the season. But it's still a good idea this time of year as the crop is coming up to get a good idea. I mean, if all the, if it looks like we're only getting you know, a 20% emergence, well, maybe we're just really dry. Maybe we haven't had enough rain to germinate those seedlings. Maybe there's something going on that's, you know, maybe there's cutworm really aggressive in, in a field and they're they're taking out some of those seedlings. So it's kind of a way to get an idea of um, of any things that you need to be uh, worried about or, or maybe areas that you did really good. I mean, if you get 80 or 90% emergence, then you can pat yourself on the back and, and be pretty pleased because that's a great way to start out the season. How many samples do you actually recommend the farmers take per field? Oh, that's always such a tricky question because some people will just go in and do one and I would say just please do more than one. <laughs> so um, ideally like five different spots in a field, um, but depending on how many fields you have to cover, uh, it would depend. So I would like to say that everybody would go in and do five um, five spots, check five spots within a given field. And at each spot, that means that we're 
not just checking five spots immediately around us. That means we walk into the field a bit, we'll toss the hoop, we'll look at that area, walk some more 20 to 50 paces. Um, you can walk a W pattern if you want. That's often a nice way to add a little bit of randomization. Um, so really the goal is to get a rep representation of the whole field. Um, and so as, as many spots as possible, um, and then obviously restricted by time that you have to, to scout those, especially, you know, if you have a lot of acres to cover, that's not always realistic, but as close to five or more as you could get, I'd say would be great. So we talked to you earlier this year about the seeding calculator. How did you find actual emergence compared to what was predicted? Uh, yeah, so that'll really depend on each individual field. And, and certainly, so where we are right now is um, north of Barrens in southern Alberta. And so we're sort of on the edge of, well, it, it's been extremely dry here uh, all spring long. And so the weekend, on the weekend, we got some rain, um, depending on where you were, maybe 10 mils. And so prior to that rain, there was a lot of concern about emergence. Um, and last year, we certainly saw really patchy emergence in our canola because it was so dry. Um, so this little rain that we got, um, and, and big rain across some of the south, uh, is, is really helpful. So, um, so, so I'd say that um, it's a little too early to assess what our emergence is going to be like, but I think there's a lot of optimism um, right now. I know in Manitoba, they're still pretty dry, um, but in Southern Alberta um, and, and Southwestern Saskatchewan, which is my, my territory, it's, there's a lot more optimism this week than there has been for the past couple months for as far as emergence in our canola. Okay, thanks. You bet. You bet.